So given the fact that I absolutely fried my skin and was red as a tomato in last week's video, I'm currently in the peeling stage of healing. I thought this week it would be a good time to talk about how you could protect yourself from the sun when you're scuba diving. So let's get right into it. Hi guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, Welcome, my name's Olivia. I'm a professional scuba diver and this is Fully Submerged. If you're interested in scuba tips, training, or travel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and let's get right into how to be better than I was. <laughs> so the first thing that you can do to protect yourself from the sun, and it's pretty obvious, is that you can put on sunscreen, right? So usually the morning of a dive when I'm packing all my stuff up, you know, like before I go for breakfast, um, you know, the very beginning when I get up in the morning and I'm pulling my hair back and doing all the things, I try and remember to put on sunscreen because you want to let that sunscreen nice and soak into your skin before you go out in the sun. Again, important to use reef safe sunscreen. Chemical sunscreens have ingredients that are very damaging to the coral reefs and contribute to coral bleaching and um, just unhealthy environment for the fish and the corals to thrive in. Um, and we're trying to keep that natural environment nice and healthy so that obviously we can go and dive it. And when you bleach out corals and kill them um, with chemicals from your sunscreen, obviously long-term you're not going to have a beautiful environment to dive in. So you wanna make sure that you're using reef safe sunscreen. I don't wanna come on here and, and try and be an expert on something that I'm not overly educated on, um, but basically you can look up what are the safe reef safe ingredients and what are not the reef safe ingredients. So just a careful thing to look out for. Um, the term reef safe is not regulated. Things like organic and those kinds of things. Companies can slap those onto their product without it actually meaning what it's supposed to mean. So you want to be careful that you're not just being like, this is reef safe and going with it. Um, look up what the chemicals are. Um, that are harmful for corals and what chemicals can be used in sunscreens that aren't harmful and that actually are reef safe. Um, and you wanna go with those chemicals. What's gonna be available to you is totally dependent on where you're located. So just do the research on the companies that are around you and, and what ingredients are actually reef safe. The next thing you can do, and if you're somebody who's not quite as sensitive to the sun as I am, I'm really, really, really sensitive to the sun. Obviously, um, well, I don't know if it's gonna pick up very much on camera at this point, um, but rash guards. Rash guards are the next thing that you can do to protect yourself from the sun. Um, so while you're on the boat in between dives, you have something covering your skin, you're good to go. If I could get away with just wearing a rash guard so that I didn't have to wear sunscreen at all, or could really reduce the amount of sunscreen that I had to wear on areas, then I would, unfortunately, that just is not going to be the case for me. I'm incredibly sensitive to the sun. I'm super, super fair. I burn very, very easily. So sunscreen is an absolute necessity for me personally, but if it's not for you, you can really limit down on the sunscreen that you use. Maybe focus it on just your face, top of your hands, neck, ears, those kinds of things. Um, and then wear a rash guard and that is going to offer sun protection for you um, while you're on the boat in between dives. So for me, I usually have to do a sunscreen and rash guard combo. You usually can get fun colors and designs and things like that too that um, can kind of personalize and I don't know, be fun. The next thing that is good for protecting yourself from the sun is wearing a buff. So these can be used in a lot of ways actually. So when I am on the boat in between dives, I can have it up to kind of protect myself from the sun, obviously while I'm on the surface. Then I can even pull it down around my neck or use it, like kind of bunch it and use it as a headband. Um, and then dive and then when I get done with the dive and I'm at the surface waiting for the boat to come pick me up That's a huge time for sunburn for me because the Sun is reflecting off of the water and bouncing those rays um, Back up onto my face. So having like a buff pull it up around my face and that blocks my neck area from Getting fried while I'm waiting for the boat to come pick me up um, after a dive. So that's another great option as well and has like a multitude of uses. The next thing I do is I'm on the boat and I have the buff up around to protect kind of like my neck and then I pop a hat on top as well 
um, so that it blocks the sun coming from above. For the ladies, I have a hat that has a hole higher up for a ponytail, um, so that can accommodate like most of my hairstyles. So depending on how I'm wearing my hair that day on the boat, um, the hat is not going to interfere with that. A hat with a brim is also a great option, um, but you know, something that's going to block the sun from directly hitting your face. I also usually bring a like cheaper pair of sunglasses onto the dive boat with me. I specifically choose a cheaper pair because um, just in case they get smashed or dropped or lost, I mean, things get thrown around on the dive boat a lot, so I don't like to bring, you know, an expensive pair of glasses that might get scratched or ruined. Um, but just a cheap pair of sunglasses that I can wear. At my instructor exam, I, in all of the anxiousness of worrying about all my actual supplies needed to present my skills, I didn't think about sunglasses at all and I forgot them. I left that day with my eyes feeling like the Sahara Desert, truly. I mean, the driest sockets I have ever felt in my life. They burned and they just hurt so bad. And um, I had like a five hour drive home after that. So I had to be watching the road and my eyeballs were just burning out of my head. So don't forget about your eyes either and bring your sunglasses. So some other tips that I use are that I try to not just sit directly in the sun all day. I will be the person sitting in the shade. Um, I will move around the boat as needed to be in whatever the spot is that's shady. If there's a covering on the boat, best believe I'm gonna be under that. Um, I'm reapplying my sunscreen fairly often. <laughs> So protecting my skin is super, super important to me. Not going to lie, I get a lot of crap for going to the extent that I go to, to not get sunburnt. But for me, it is what it is. I am super, super pale. Um, I burn easily and despite what anyone else thinks, I'm not going to tan. It's not a thing that happens for me. It's not going to happen for me. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. And quite honestly, despite doing all of the things that I just described to you, I still end up getting sunburnt because if I even so much as slip up a little bit, it's over for me. So seriously, I encourage you to take care of your skin. Keep the reefs in mind while you're doing this. So that's what I do. I hope it helped you or I hope you learned something. I continue with my scuba shenanigans frequently over on my Instagram at fully submerged scuba if you're interested in checking that out. Otherwise, I will see you right here next week until we dive again. Goodbye. That might be another annoying snarky one this week, but it's a sensitive topic, especially since I'm currently dealing with it. So. This goes out to my pale folks out there. I'm here for you. Let me know if you are a paled sister like me. <sighs> I feel you. I'll tell you what, I've had sun poisoning. I've been like blistered, peeled, been so burnt that my skin was purple. You name it, I felt the pain. And it's not worth it. It's just not worth it and I don't want to look like a saggy, wrinkly bag when I am old, um, nor do I want skin cancer.